Welcome to today's episode of Games with Ben. Uh, today, I just wanted to give an overview of the games I got to play at Origins 2023. Uh, I got to play nine different games when I was there, so I'm just going to go through each one, give a, give a brief description of kind of how the game plays and my thoughts on it. Um, and yeah, I just uh, want to start out by saying... All of these games were really good. Uh, I highly recommend every single one on this list. So just because one is, uh, you know, coming up at the bottom of my list does not mean I would not recommend it. Uh, I was very fortunate to play a bunch of very good games while I was there. Uh, so with that, I will dive in. Uh, so I played nine games when I was at Origins. You can see them on the bottom of your screen right now. Um, and I'll just dive in with my number nine game, which is Clever Forever. Um, this is the fourth in the Clever series, so there is, uh, what is there, Clever, uh, there's Twice as Clever, I don't have the first one, I have Twice as Clever, I have Clever Cubed, uh, now this is Clever Forever, and I'm blanking on the name of the first one right now, uh, but all of these are games by Wolfgang Warsh, um, and all of them are played similarly but slightly different, uh, so, you know, in Clever Forever, the same basic mechanics happen where it's a roll and write, you've got six colored die, uh, you're gonna roll all of them, you're gonna pick one, uh, you know, any, any numbers that are lower than the one you pick will go to the middle and you won't be able to use those again, so... It's a game of trying to basically maximize your point value by, uh, you know, strategically taking lower dice when you're not going to be able to lose some, and then taking higher dice when you can afford to lose some more. Um, so this game is uh, no different. It is uh, pretty much the same as all of the other ones, you know, but uh, you've, uh, you've still got your five different colored sections. They all score slightly different than all the other versions before it. Uh, but it still offers that very rewarding, you know, lots of combos in the game where, you know, you take an action somewhere and then you get a bunch of free actions other places. Um, and so that's always fun. This is also a good multiplayer game. I play it solo a lot, uh, but it's great to play with other players as well. Um, you're always engaged on other people's turns because you get to choose a die that they don't use on their turn. Um, so I get the same feeling uh, as in this one as I do with all the other Clever games. So um, would highly recommend this one, and that is number nine. Number eight on the list is a newer game called Ruha or Rauha. I am not entirely sure how to pronounce it. Uh, this is by Johannes Guppy and Theo Riviere. Um, apologies if I butchered any names or the name of the game. Um, this one I got to demo. I didn't play the entire game, um, so caveat there, uh, but I made it about halfway through. Um, this reminds me a lot of Targi. Um, so you've got, uh, you know, you've got this little three by three grid and you're going to be drafting cards to put in that grid. Um, each card is going to have something on the bottom it does. It's also got a little ecosystem in the upper right. You're trying to create rows or columns of these same symbols, and that'll give you a special bonus. Um, that bonus can be taken from you, so as soon as someone else gets that same uh, row or column of the same symbol you have, they immediately take it from you, uh, which is one of the things I didn't love about this game, to be honest. Um, but... You've also got this little uh, round marker that travels along the outside of the board, and that's basically going to tell you which columns or which rows are going to get scored at the end of that round. Um, and yeah, uh, you'll notice also some of these cards, or I guess all of them in this picture, have these little spores on them. So once you get to the corners of this board, um, you basically get to do everything with a spore on it again. Um, so... This was a fun one. I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of how the bonuses work, and essentially, like, if you're working toward the same bonus as someone else, you kind of want to intentionally get their second, uh, because then you'll immediately take it from the person who just got it in front of you. Um, so I kind of wish, uh, I wish there was a way they could have made it so, like, you had to 
beat the person. So like if they've got a three, you have to get a second column or second row or something before you can take it. Um, but that is a minor gripe. Uh, this was fun. There was lots of engine building, uh, lots of, uh, you know, lo lots of stuff going on in this one. Uh, but also, you know, not, not too overwhelming in complexity. Uh, this is a quick 30, 45 minute game, maybe. Um, so yeah, enjoy my time with this one. Um, and that is number eight on my list. Number seven is going to be Motor City. Um, this is by Motor City Games. Uh, this is in the same line as Fleet the Dice Game and Three Sisters. Um, it's got very similar vibes, especially to Three Sisters, I would say. Um, so the way this one works is you've got a bunch of die, you're going to roll them, and you're going to put them out in this central area, um, which is color-coded. You've got this grid, and each kind of square has different symbols on it. Um, so the way it works is you are going to draft one die from this grid. You are going to get the bonus that is on the board. Uh, so like if you take this die, I believe there's two bucks under there, so you would get two bucks. Um, you would also get to do the action that's on the die. Uh, so in this case, you get to do the sales action. Um, and then finally, you get to put the die on your player sheet. Let me see if I can find a picture of that player sheet really quick. So you get to put the die in one of these four spots, and then you'll also get to do the action. So you'll get to do three things every single turn. Um, and basically, uh, you know, in Fleet the Dice game, you're catching fish, and uh, Three Sisters, you're planting crops, and this one, you're building cars. So you've got each of these different sections where you're either, you know, you're, you're uh, testing your car, you're selling stuff, you're uh, doing production or engineering. So... Um, it's, it's got very similar vibes to the first two games. Uh, there's still, uh, lots of symbols to keep track of, but once you kind of get the symbols down, uh, it's really not too bad. Um, lots of different combos, so that's, that's kind of the fun thing about all these different games, is you can really get on a roll with these combos and get for some really long and fun turns. Um, you get the same exact thing in this game as well, uh, so offers you a very similar experience to those first two while kind of freshening it up with a new theme and, you know, slightly different strategies. So enjoy my time with this one. Um, and that is number seven. Moving on to number six is going to be Vienna by Stefan Feld. So Vienna is one of the games in the Feld City Collection. Um, enjoy my time with this one. Uh, I'll, as you saw before there are two other games in the city collection that i liked more than vienna um but still enjoyed vienna quite a bit this is kind of like a route building slash connecting game um you're gonna be putting your dudes on this map um trying to surround the different areas here and once you completely surround an area uh you are gonna take that resource that's on the map um, each of these resources are going to be worth different amounts of points at the end of the game based on how far uh, the markers get on this track. Um, and you're also, uh, this is also a little bit of a resource management game, so in order to put a dude on the map, you need to pay the cost there. Um, so kind of the... It's, it's actually interesting, so it's a card drafting game, uh, that's one of the main mechanics. So in the beginning, you're going to get uh, three cards and you're going to have to put them on your desk. And then so the very first card you get, you're going to be able to use whatever the bonus is on the bottom of the card. Uh, the second card you get, you're going to be able to take that resource. And the third card you get is going to tell you uh, which item you're going to move up on this track. Uh, so you kind of have to place those cards strategically on your desk so that, uh, you know, you, you get the resources you want or you get the powers you want or you get to move the track you want. Ideally, you get all three of those things that you want, but sometimes the cards just don't work out that way and you have to make some tough calls. Um, so that's the gist of Vienna. Um, 
I enjoyed it. The one thing I didn't love about it is that uh, I was expecting these tracks at the end of the game to be pretty variable, where, where like, you know, some items might be worth uh, three points and others are worth six, um, which would cause a pretty wide difference in end game scoring. In the game I played, which maybe, you know, I only played one game of it, so maybe this was an anomaly, but everything on the track ended up in basically the same spot. They were all within like a point or two of each other. Um, so the items that you were getting really didn't matter in the end. It's, it's kind of came down to whoever got the most of those items. Um, and I wish there was some more strategy involved as to like which items you were picking up. But I still really enjoyed the puzzle of, you know, moving your guys around the map. Uh, there is a phase uh, towards the end of the game where, like, you have to pay the guys that are on your map. And if you don't, you have to take them all off, uh, which is, uh, that can be kind of rough if you don't have enough money to pay those guys, uh, which I did not in my game. So I kind of had to start over on the, on the map there, um, which was not great. Uh, but that was, uh, you know, poor planning on my part. No fault of the game. So... Still very much enjoyed my time with Vienna and would definitely look forward to playing it again. So, uh, that was number six. Number five is going to be Tribes of the Wind by Joachim Thome. So, Tribes of the Wind uh, was really interesting. I hadn't ever played a game quite like it. Uh, it's it's going to be a sort of a hand management slash tile lane sort of game uh we'll we'll get into it in a little bit here so the all of the cards are going to give you uh actions but they give you actions based on the other cards around you um or cards other cards you have in your hand so for instance this very first card in this example uh says if you have two i think that's fire uh if you have two fire then you get to do either this five water or five movement. Um, so in this case, this person does have two fire, so they could play this card. Uh, if they don't have two fire, they basically have to wait until they have two fire in order to play that card. Um, a lot of the cards are comparing your hand to your neighbor's hands, uh, or in these cases, so this has a, just a picture of each symbol, so all that means is if... Uh, if you have all four symbols, uh, which this person also does, uh, you can play this card. Um, it's kind of a little blurry in this picture, but this one is uh, comparing to your neighbors. So this is saying, I believe if each of your neighbors has a leaf, uh, then you get to do one of these things. So if only one of your neighbors has a leaf, you get to do the top thing. If both of them have it, you get to do the bottom thing. Um, which is the case for a lot of these cards. A lot of them have a uh, not as powerful action and then a more powerful action if both conditions are met, um, which is really interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, let's take a look at the actual board. Find a picture of that. So here's what the board looks like. Um, so you've got this area which starts out all polluted. So the whole goal of the game is to unpollute your area, uh, build these forest tiles, and then move your your wind riders out to the forest. And once a wind rider populates a forest, which basically each forest has these number of circles on it. So once you get the number of wind riders equal to the number of circles, uh, you can build a village there. Uh, and as soon as one person uh, builds all five of their villages, then that triggers the game end. Um, and you can see like the different end game scoring conditions at the bottom of the board here. Um, so I really, really liked the card action and kind of how that was, uh, you know, it was determined based on other cards you have or cards your neighbors had. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, Really enjoyed the art on this one, too. Like, it's a super bright, colorful game. Um, very, very pleasant to look at on the table. Um, has great table presence, so very much enjoyed that as well. Um, the only thing I don't like is uh, I'm not a huge fan of these games where, like, the first person to do something kind of triggers the end of the game. Um, you know, some people 
can take different approaches where you're trying to, you know, get the most points because that's the, the goal of the game, right? Uh, but someone else might just be trying to get as many villages out here as fast as possible. Um, so if you get as many villages out as fast as possible, that's going to make the game go faster. Um, no one is going to score as many points, but uh, that is a valid strategy. So uh, I don't always love games like that, uh, but still very much enjoyed playing this one and would definitely look forward to playing it again. Next up on my list is going to be Forges of Ravenshire by Sam Stockton. Um, this one was super fun. Um, this is uh, number four on the list, by the way. So this one was super fun. It is, I would say, a dice drafting, engine building sort of game. Um, but unlike most engine builders where you're starting off really slow and then you're picking up steam as the game goes on, uh, I know a lot of people you know, don't, maybe don't like engine builders because it seems like a bit of a slog in the beginning of the game. That is not the case at all with Forges of Ravenshire. So, um, you know, you've Forges, you've got this objective card that you start with, which seems very pricey. Like, you have to pay a ton of resources to, to get this item. Um, but I was already, like, buying them at the end of my first turn. Um, so you basically start off at a sprint, and you keep sprinting the whole game. So um, the, way, the way this works is you've got this board... Um, this is just a close-up snapshot of some of it. So there's, I believe, six or seven different spots. Each one's going to give you different resources. Um, half of them are going to favor lower-valued dice, and the other half are going to favor higher-valued dice. So, uh, you know, in this case up here, this leather one, if you put a one or a two out there, you're going to get two leather and this dragon tooth. Um, so that favors lower dice. And this one, uh, you've got... Uh, I'm forgetting the name of this right now, like, uh, coal or something. Um, if you put a five or a six down, you're going to get two of those and a gem. Uh, so this one favors the higher value dice. What's really cool about this game is you're going to start with dice and there's going to be dice out on the board. When you put a die down, you're going to get the resources. Then you're going to take a die from anywhere on the board, and you're also going to get the resources for that die you take. So I could put a little die up here, get a bunch of leather, and then I could take this uh, six from... I know it's not called coal, but I'm calling it coal because I can't remember the name of it. Um, you take the six from here, and you'd also get the higher bonus for this. Then... You get to do a third thing. So you, you put a die down, you get the action. You pick a die up, you get the action. Um, then you're going to put it on your player board in one of these nine spots. So corresponding color. Um, and you're going to get to run that column. Uh, so you'll notice, uh, you know, one of these actions let you get these bonus tiles. You get to put these bonus tiles on your player board. And that's going to let you do more cool things whenever you put a die in that column um so it's a little bit like wingspan where like you put a die in a in a row and then you activate everything in that row uh this is same sort of concept where you put a die in this column and then you run the whole column that's the first phase the next phase is you're actually going to move all these dice over to the right and then you're going to produce a bunch of resources um and the whole point of doing all this and getting all these resources is to try and buy these cards. Um, so uh, this is pretty zoomed out, so you can't really see the symbols, but each of these cards have different uh, resource requirements on them, and they're going to give you victory points at the end of the game. So that was Forge's I really enjoyed this one, guys. Uh, I debated moving it up higher on my list uh, because it was so much fun. I only played one round of it, which is why I did not move it higher up on my list. Um, I didn't really get the full experience of playing the full game because at the demo table, they would only let you play around, not the whole game. Um, but I very much enjoyed like it was crazy combos the entire round I played um, and you really felt like you were going full speed ahead from the very beginning which was a lot of fun 
So very much enjoyed this one. This one was just on Kickstarter. It just fulfilled recently. Um, so, you know, I imagine it won't come out until probably next year or so. Um, but highly looking forward to playing this one again as soon as I can. So that was number four. Number three is going to be an older game, uh, Heaven and Ale. So if you have not played Heaven and Ale, uh, this is designed by Andreas Smith and Michael Kiesling. Um, this came out back in 2017. Uh, it is a, I'd say an action selection resource management sort of game. Uh, you are moving your guy around on a track. I'll show you a picture of the track in a second. Um, basically each, let me actually, let me bring it up now. So... Uh, here's what the track looks like. So everyone starts here, you're going to move around in a circle, and as soon as everyone gets to the end, that's the end of the round. The cool thing about Heaven and Nail is that you can move your guy as many spaces as you want. So, uh, you know, you can move to this first spot, each spot's going to have a, a token on it with this different resource and a number. Um, when you land on a spot with a token, you have to pay the cost of the token. Uh, and if you put it on the dark side of your board, you just pay the cost. If you put it on the light side, you're going to pay double the cost. Um, and as soon as you trigger a production, uh, the dark side of your board is going to produce money. And the light side is going to produce uh, resources. So it's going to move your resources up your track. Um, the whole goal of the game is to basically get all of your resources as high up on this track, as well as your, uh, your, oh, what's the name of this guy? I forget the name of this guy right now, um, but you want to move him as high on this track as well. Um, and basically whoever gets all of their things the highest is, is going to win, and that's the person who makes the most beers. Um... It's, I, I really like the, the track movement, um, how you can kind of move anywhere you want. Uh, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, the game I played, it was a bad thing. Uh, there are some spots that like give you special bonuses, um, and all of those spots got taken right in front of me, and I was kind of left with a dud uh, last turn, which brings me to something I don't like about the game, is you can get shut out of some spots and... Um, you know, can, can result in some not so satisfying or not very fun turns. Um, another thing that I don't love about the game is it's very challenging to get money. Uh, you run out of money really fast and it can be really hard to get more. Um, but all that to say, it is a very, very well designed game. Um, it is a challenging, rewarding experience. Um, but it can feel like a bit of a slog sometimes and a bit of a struggle. Um, but to me, that's part of the fun of the game. Um, to others, that might be a reason why they don't like it as much. So, anyway, uh, this was number three on my list. I actually went back and forth a lot with this and Forges of Ravenshire, because Forges of Ravenshire is uh, exactly the opposite of this, not a struggle at all. Um, but I uh, gave the edge to this because it is a tried and tested game. It's been out for a while um, and it's fairly well rated. Um, so I think as far as gameplay, this is probably the better game. As far as fun factor, might have given the edge to uh, Forges on that one. Moving to number two on the list is Hamburg. So Hamburg is another one in the Feld City Collection. Um, this one was a lot of fun. Uh, it is a card management, hand management game, um, where it's very similar to like Brass Birmingham, I'd say, where each card, you can do different things with it. Uh, so you'll, you can either pay the card uh, to do different actions, like get money or get workers or, you know, move up on a track or build a wall or something. Um, or you can actually pay to build the card and do whatever the action is on the card. Um, so it is a constant struggle of, you know, you have all these good cards that have all these good actions on them, but you know you're going to just have to discard some cards to do different actions. Um, so which cards do you actually want to play versus which ones do you want to spend? Um, it was a very rewarding uh, and very uh, thought-provoking game. Um, so... Uh, 
really really enjoyed this one there's also bonuses uh you know and round bonuses for whoever is farthest up on different tracks you'll get four points for that um but yeah at, at the core of the game it's that card slash hand management um and that uh constant battle of wanting to play everything but not being able to afford everything so um very much enjoyed hamburg uh it would have been easily number one if not for marrakesh so marrakesh uh is the last game number one on my list by a mile uh, if i'm being honest so marrakesh was awesome um had an amazing time playing this one uh if I was not on a buying ban right now, I probably would have bought it immediately. Um, but anyway, in Marrakesh, you've got 12 different tiled, different colored cubes. Um, you are going to pick three of them uh, to basically say, like, these are the actions I want to do on my turn. Uh, so you'll put these, these little guys, your assistants, on the three colors that you choose. Um, then everyone will hand the three cubes that they chose to the uh, whoever's closest to the dice tower. They will drop those cubes down the dice tower. And what is cool about this is that there is actually uh, some barriers in the way in this dice tower. Uh, so not every cube will fall out of the dice tower. Um, some are going to get stuck in there. Not permanently. They'll come out later. Um, but some cubes will get stuck. So you don't always know uh, what's going to come out of there. Um, at that point, it becomes a drafting game, so people are going to draft those cubes, which are basically going to move up uh, your uh, little cylinders on the different tracks, which are going to make those tracks more powerful. Um, and then you're going to activate each of your workers in any order you want, um, and they'll perform the actions on whatever that color is. Um, so you'll do that until you use all your cubes in a four player game. So you do that four times um, and you'll get to do every action. Um, and then you'll basically keep doing that. So you'll do that, I believe four different seasons um, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. So really, really enjoyed Marrakesh, uh, the whole cube selection slash drafting and making your actions more powerful as the game goes on was a lot of fun. Um, I believe this is a picture of the deluxe version. It has these recessed player boards, um, and some other, like, cool wooden walls, it looks like. Uh, so, anyway, all of these city collection games have standard versions and deluxe versions, and the deluxe version is, uh, typically 30 or 40 bucks more expensive, and you get these nice features. Um, so, obviously, up to you if you want to splurge for those features or not, uh, but... As far as gameplay goes, they're the exact same, um, and very, very, very highly recommend Marrakesh. Um, so that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if this was helpful, would love if you would like or subscribe to my channel. Uh, and until next time, spend games with Ben.